Here's a quick example of how to calculate several of the terms related to a short-term loan. This short-term loan, you're going to borrow $1,500 at a 2.5 annual percentage rate and repay it in 18 months by making monthly payments. It will cost $75 in other charges to get the loans. So the first question is, what is the principal for the loan? The principal of a loan is usually just the loan proceeds, how much you actually borrow. But often short-term loans also have other charges which are included in the principal. That's the case with this loan. We have an extra $75 in charges that need to be paid. You could pay the $75 up front and then your principal would be $1,500 but we're going to let the $75 be included in the principal of our loan. So, our principal is $1,500 plus $75 or $1,575. $1,575 will be the principal for this loan. Now most short-term short loans are done based on simple interest or add-on interest meaning that all of the interest is calculated at the beginning of the loan and paid for all at one time. So we need to do a simple interest calculation on this principle that we just calculated. Using the percent uh, simple interest formula proportion that we learned earlier, we can see that we would put the 100 here our 2.5 APR goes here. This amount will be the principal of the loan times the length of the loan. Now the length of the loan is in months, but when we put the term into our simple interest proportion, we need to put it in in years. So that means we need to take the number of months and divide it by 12. And so we will put 18 twelfths into the loan simple interest proportion. As I stated at the time, it's usually easier to calculate this value before you do any other calculations. So we will multiply 1575 times. 18 divided by 12. And we get 2,362.5. So now we have 2,362.50 is equal to 2.5 over 100. Now we just simply solve that proportion. We'll multiply 2362.50 times 2.5 and divide that by 100. That gives us $59 and we got four decimal places on our answer, but when we're doing money, we only round to two decimal places. So that's $59.06. So our finance charges are $59.06. Well now we need to determine what the total amount due is. Well we've already got calculated our principal. We have to pay all of that, including the other charges, plus the interest back. So we just simply add those two numbers. You can use your calculator to do this also. 1575 plus 1506 gives us $1,634.06. This is the total amount that we have to pay back on the loan. But remember, the loan allowed us to make equal monthly payments to pay back this loan. So our next question is, what are the monthly payments? 
Well, remember, we just were told that we needed to pay back $1,634.06. So if we divide that by the 18 payments that we make, we get $90.78. Point seventy-eight, and then you see we get a whole string of ones here. Well, now let's think about this. Our payments are actually a little bit over ninety dollars and seventy-eight cents. If I only pay ninety dollars and seventy-eight cents each month, then by the end of the loan, I won't have paid quite enough money back, and my last payment would have to be a little bit larger than ninety seventy-eight. So what most lenders will do is regardless of what the normal rounding convention would say, they always round payments up to the nearest penny. So instead of rounding this as $90.78, I should go ahead and round this off to $90.79. Then if I make 17 payments of $90.79, I will have overpaid a little bit by that time, so my last payment would actually be a little bit less than $90.79. Usually it's better when you have the surprise of having a payment that's a little bit less than what you're used to paying than to find out that you have to pay one that's more. So this is a good thing for the borrower. So our monthly payments will be $90.79. Now we have to determine the effective APR. So remember that we have that our total cost of credit are the charges that we paid, the $75, plus the interest that we had to pay, which was $59 and six cents. So our actual total cost of credit here is $75 plus $59.06 which gives me a total cost of credit of $134.06. ,006. I treat that as the interest and do an APR calculation. Remember that we can also use the simple interest proportion to help find the percent, the annual percentage rate for a loan. So we start with our basic purport, percent proportion. We're looking for this number here this time. Our principal is the amount that we borrowed, not the principal for the loan. It's our loan proceeds. If you remember, we only borrowed $1,500. So that has to be the principle in this calculation. And since it cost us $134.06 on top of that $1,500 to get this loan, that becomes the interest that we have paid. So now we will take that and solve that proportion by multiplying 134.06 times 100. And then we will divide that total by 1,500. That turns out to be 13,406 divided by 1,500. Oh, I forgot. This wasn't a one-year loan. This was an 18-month loan. So we need the 18 months in there.
So we see that we get a total of 5.96% interest for the effective APR in this case. And again, if you think back to the original terms of the loan, the nominal interest rate was 2.5% APR. But this new amount of 5.9% also takes into account the $75 that we had to pay in other charges and treats it as additional interest that we paid for this loan. The questions from your homework may ask you to do any part of this. Some of them will be multi-part questions where you will do some of these parts to lead up to one answer and some will be questions where you do the entire process. But in each case you will be directed through individual parts of how to do the calculations. Just a reminder the loan proceeds are how much you actually borrow. Your initial principal calculations then are based on the loan proceeds plus the other charges. That gives you the interest that you pay. The cost of credit for the loan is actually the other charges plus the interest. The total amount due is the adjusted principal plus the interest. You could also think about that as the loan proceeds plus the other charges plus the interest. And in this case it was 163406. You divide that by the number of allowed payments to get your monthly payment. And remember to always round your monthly payment up to the nearest penny. And then once you have your cost of credit you could calculate the effective APR, which includes any additional costs over and above the interest that you have to pay for the loan. I hope this helps.